So there's a story about Riverton that in 1876, Riverton had a problem. There was a small group of settlers here and the community wasn't growing. And the problem was that while there was a river in Riverton, there was no way to get the water from the river up to the bench lands. So a small group of organizers figured out how to build a canal. And they mapped it out, figured out how the water would flow. And once the canal was built, the settlement started to grow, and so did the local economy. We can't separate the story of infrastructure from the story of economic development. If you go to the Industrial Revolution, it was electricity that really helped make that possible. If you go to post-war America, it was the interstate highway system. And so today we've got new challenges. Kevin Kelly wrote a book in 1998. It's an important book that almost nobody's read. It's called New Rules for a New Economy. And in the introduction to that book, he said, communication is not just a sector of the economy, communication is the economy. The network increasingly is the metaphor around which our economy is organized. And yet, the problem is that the network is organized around the internet service provider. You and I pay for that network every week, every month. So what we're interested in is how do we change this paradigm where the network is not designed around the internet service provider, but it's organized around the people who pay for the network every month. If we think about the internet as a digital highway, then the internet service provider is a toll booth on that highway. But it's not just a toll to pay to play, there are many kinds of tolls that we play, pay, and we, we pay them continuously. And I want to focus on two, um, and I want to go back to Kevin Kelly's book to talk about these two. The first one is that the network economy rewards open systems. Because closed systems close off opportunities. The internet is a global, scale open system. But the internet service provider is a closed system. The second point from Kevin Kelly is that in the network economy, the major transgression is to stifle innovation. And we do that when we stifle competition. The internet has shattered the barriers to innovation but the internet service provider blocks all outside innovation. So how do we change an industry that's as big as the internet service provider? I mean, you think about the big brands that run this industry and the massive lobbying machines they have. How do we change that? <clears throat> well, the first thing to understand is the distinction between infrastructure and services. Because those are combined, we're used to thinking of them as the same thing, but the infrastructure can be wired or wireless. Keep it simple, think of the wire that comes to your house and it's the way you access the internet. Services run over that wire. So the first thing we have to do to fix this problem is to separate the infrastructure and the services. And that's a business problem and it's a technology problem. So how do we do that? How do we create that separation? When we have infrastructure that's essential, we form that into a utility. And by essential, that means that in this economy, everyone needs 
access to that infrastructure. And if you believe that our new economy is communication, then everyone does need access. So we organize the infrastructure into a utility, and we push services to the cloud. The current form of this system combines both the infrastructure and the services. And so ask yourself the question, who should these networks serve? Right now, they're serving the interests of the internet service provider because of rule number one. And rule number one is that whoever controls the infrastructure has control. So to solve this problem, we need to separate the infrastructure and the services. And remembering rule number one, we need to give control over the infrastructure to the people who fund these networks month in, month out. <clears throat> Let me show you how th what this looks like when services are in the cloud. You'd come in, you'd find a plan, you'd click subscribe, a network is automatically provisioned, no human intervention, and you're live. If you want to unsubscribe, you'd click unsubscribe, the network's torn down, and you can go choose a new ISP. The only reason we can't do that in most of the networks in this country is because they control the infrastructure and the services. That technology is disruptive to move the internet service provider to the cloud, but what is probably more disruptive is the innovation that can take place on an open network. That's one innovation. But if we open up the network and let anybody innovate in this space, which is the access space, really significant things would happen. So this is called network virtualization. And whenever you hear the word virtualization, just think software anything that gets virtualized. So if your kids play soccer in front of a screen in the basement, they're not actually kicking a ball. They're having a software experience, and we call that virtualization. So in this case, <laughs> network virtualization is when we create software networks. And software is amazing because it's flexible, and it can be on demand, and it can be real time, and we can build things up and tear them down quickly. So the, the really important space for this kind of innovation is for everything that should not be going across the internet. So the internet is a marketplace for ideas and information and services and an actual marketplace where we can go buy stuff. But we don't really have a marketplace for everything that should not be on the internet. And with network virtualization and an open network, we can create that marketplace. That means we can use the same infrastructure and we can virtualize it and we can create networks for public safety or the grid. And there's a lot of concern about international hacking of our, of our utility systems. Um, telemedicine. So anything, take education. If a child's sick, why do we send that child to school? why don't we just give them access through a private network to attend class virtually? Let me show you how this would work. Oh, first, this, this quote from the National Science Foundation. This is two years ago in a workshop. We're at the dawn of a new era, software-defined infrastructure, a starting point of a very deep revolution that will reshape our global computing infrastructure. Today's internet will run in just one slice across the infrastructure with many other novel services populating other slices. Okay? So at the federal level, they see what's possible. The large ISPs can implement this, but if they do, they're going to implement it for their benefit. They're going to monetize that with every, every service that gets provided. If the infrastructure is organized as a utility, then this will flow freely and we'll be able to use these networks on demand without economic barriers to it. So this is what this would look like. You go in, 
you click on a private network, you hit subscribe, it gives you the choice. Do you want to host a network or join a network? It gives you a code. You share the code with whoever wants to join the network, and you've got a private network for that marketplace for everything that should not be going across the public internet. If you want to be a smart city, this is the kind of innovation we need. Fiber optics would be the base infrastructure for smart city, and we should put it in a utility for the benefit of the city and the citizens. So how can a city afford this kind of network? Well, the great news is the money is already there. We're spending it every month. In a city about the size of Riverton, there's probably around 15,000 premises. If the average internet price is $70, that means that annually this town is spending over $12 million. Over a 20-year period, that's $250 million. You can build a really nice network for that much money. So the money's here. It's not a matter of finding new money or taking on big debt. It's a matter of making the money transparent, how's it flowing, and then allocating it to the utility, to infrastructure, and to the services that are in the cloud. In the first city that we deployed this kind of network, we, d we dropped the average ISP price within 10 months from $75 to $45. And the speed went from 30 megabits per second to over 100 megabits per second, symmetrical, up and down. So it's a, the price is going to come down more, and the speed's going to go up more as this open market takes effect. So what's important in this new economy is that we get a network that's open edge to edge, where innovation can flow freely. And to do that, we need to go back to our canal builders in early Riverton. This isn't something that a technology company is going to come in and provide. It really do, I really liked the mayor's talk this morning because that level of community engagement where people take the time to understand and talk to their neighbors and explain what we're paying, the tolls we're paying month in and month out for our current system. So the way we, cha we change this $100 billion industry is one city at a time by showing a difference in what the value that we're getting from these networks. Thank you.